So, in your workbooks, if you'll open them up, I'm going to have you write in here, because this is kind of a little, kind of a little test here on page 5, and this will kind of help you out. Um, I want you to write in there who monitors the World Wide Web for you for all online reputation management. Who's that person? If it's you, just put me. <laughs> you can write me in there. And then who supports you? Is it your GM, your owner, whoever? Write that person next to the, the support or the owner of it. And the owner could be you as well. All right? This is probably the biggest piece to start with, this process. If you do this in your store, you're going to have a pretty good process here. This is not brain surgery by any means. It's simplistic, but it's very effective. So monitoring. How do you, how do you monitor everything that's done online? How do you do that? Uh, there's about reputation management? Yeah, anything that's said about your store. Oh, uh, stores. Uh, the design on the website used to be with our phone. Okay. Uh, and then uh, for our Chevy, we use uh, Google. Okay. And then uh, in terms of reputation management, uh, we're just high, we just hired PCG. Okay. Uh, Good, good for you. How about you? How do you monitor? We use Dexterous. Um, okay, good. We use our own reputation and uh, the gym also supports and helps you to respond to any other way customers. Um, we also have a bag of tools that we can go in That's good. And do you guys do enterprise level? Uh, yeah, basically, I mean, we follow the uh, person with the videos with the video that conversation with any other environment. Just doing that alone. Okay, good. So it's really important. So have you, anybody ever used Google Alerts? Yeah, Google Alerts, good for you. Yeah, just a couple things to think about in the alert section is that if you, if you do expand out, one of the recommendations is that all department heads see every review. So when you do the alerts, you have to set it up for each email address. Um, so just, just be aware that it's not 100%. There's a bunch of places out there, but at least it'll help you try to manage all the contact points. I can tell you when you start claiming your pages, you're going to see more input coming from those environments. And that doesn't mean you have to manage every one of them, like I said. But the cool thing is, is that you'll get your alerts and it'll show you and give you the link where anything was written or posted about you. And when we talk about the mobile space, about geotargeting and geofencing, which leads to gamification, which is the next step to social. Well, all the pundits in the world talk about how gaming is going to be the next social circle. And you know, where do I rank? And gaming is very simple, it's like a sport. I want to be a part of a community. Anybody game in here? Two of you, three? All right, so yeah, you want to be a part of something even though you may never meet the person. You can play around the world with somebody, right? And then you want to know how you do, so everybody wants to know their status. And then everybody wants to know how they rank against their other teammates. And consumers are the same way. You know, like mastering a four square check-in to give the crowns and the badges. As an example. Uh, going with that, I found very interesting. We kind of the first kind of social media is like Call of Duty Elite, mm -hmm. and I think that's how it's going. It's uh, it's going to be you pay for the game plus have your social media site. Doesn't matter what game it is, and I think that would be a critical place to, especially a particular type of car that would maybe market to somebody. We've been discussing about doing that. Oh, absolutely. If you look at the Scion product, the Fiat product, which was a great example you just gave, so you look at these by uh, demographics, by age, um, most importantly age more than anything else, demographics, but you know, as a Ford dealer, I'm going to look at a Ford Focus consumer a completely different way than I'm going to look at an F-150 customer. And they do different things in different places, so you're right, I mean, you know, you get a guy that hunts, and you create an environment, we don't have it yet. It's coming, yeah. it's there. You know, we, we will look, I really believe this is true in the next two years, we will see social and search kind of be all one thing because it'll all be germane to what we want. It'll be, it'll, the algorithms are so good, I call it Big Brother, you can call it whatever you want. Knows us so well by, by quick stream data that you know, it'll just serve us up stuff that we're always interested in. It'll be like one place, you know, a barrage and just click on it and, it's all your stuff. And Google talked about that yesterday. That's what plus is, that's what they're trying to do there. The plus and search are the same thing. Of course, I guess if anybody can do that, they can do that in the integration of those two pieces together. 
uh, response. So who in your dealerships responds to all reviews? Write that in and write that person. And if you if it's just you, <clears throat> I, the only thing I make sure that your GM or owner of that store is also included and sees those responses. Okay, and then ask. And this is probably the the hardest part that most people uh, really talk about that they can't get customers to do it. Um, so let me give you a couple of insights. So there, there's some uh, there's some really good uh, practices going on. Um, I, I think there's, I can't even tell you, I've seen about 10 really good apps. When I talk about the mobile here in a minute, you'll hear this one makes sense. So we see a lot of usage in our industry on the app side, on the legacy side or life cycle side of the car, fixed operational service, that, that four or five years to own. And we have now in F&I, you'll like this, this is good stuff. They're actually downloading the app with the customer in F&I on that customer smart device automatically opt them into the app and automatically set up their first service appointment. It's just a part of the process. So guess what you just did with every customer? You're, they're in. I mean, literally, you got push notification capability, you have communication capability, uh, and then once we start this, then the social piece comes out of this. And your connectivity to that consumer is, is big. It's, it's real big. Um, and then ask, so you know, we did an experiment. We went to four markets. Uh, we had some marketing people with us, um, some product people with us. We took iPads into service departments. Um, this is where we realized that we need to get rid of that IP filter thing, you know, where it can't come from the same IP address. And we were writing 10, 15 a day in less than two hours in the service department. Now having, being armed with the knowledge now to know that new car consumers are looking at service reviews prior to purchase, this is another great way to start building review volume because it's really important. I mean, you're going to get negative reviews. We're in the human business, but the only way to counteract a negative review is to get ten honest reviews. It just—it's just kind of the way the math works. Do we recommend that you only use Cars.com? No, you've got to go out and use the Google. And Google's switching around a lot of their algorithms right now. Peter got—they uh, uh, well, T. I don't think he got blasted because he's such a nice young man. <laughs> But, but he did get some questions because there's a couple of dealers in that room that had like eight, nine hundred reviews. And then when they changed their algorithms a couple weeks ago, guess what happened to all those reviews? They were gone. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, so, uh, yeah, he, he had a couple of questions about that yesterday, which is legitimate, right? But they're just changing. And then promote. So when I talk about promotion, I don't, when I talk about syndication of promotion, I don't mean syndicating reviews from Google into cars and cars into, uh, we, we are being um, indexed right now on Google, uh, but their stuff's changing so fast. I mean, that used to be the hot thing to make sure you're indexed, but they're creating their own environment. So it's, but the cool thing about this is we have tools on cars that can help you syndicate these reviews. So let me ask you a question. How many of you have reviews around your inventory now on your own website? I want you to think about this. No matter what you buy in the last year, no matter what you shop for in the last year online, I don't care if it's a book, a video, I don't care if it's a lawnmower, a heater. Um, what do we do? We go and look at the product and attach to every product is what? Reviews. Listen, we, I mean, this is me, but I, I know I'm not much different from anybody else. I go in here and hear, hear about a hot app. I go on iTunes, I look at the hot app, right? Well, I need that, that's a good sports app. Well, there's four or five, there's maybe 50 apps like it to do the same thing, right? And you'll spend an hour doing what? Reading what? The reviews about the product and the thing's free. So if we do that with something that's free, how do you think consumers now are dealing with something that's 50 grand? Cars today. But you know, we're the, one, of the, one of the secular industries that don't have reviews to the product from consumers consumer generated contract. So we have syndication tools that, and we're coming out with new ones by the end of the year that are going to help you. And there's a couple apps out there. Some of, the, some of the vendors have apps that allow you to syndicate your reviews to your Facebook page. So the, the key here is it's like taking video, customer testimonial video. If you take one testimonial video of your customer, you can put it on YouTube. You can put it on your Facebook. You can put it 15 different places. You can put it under your testimonials on your own website, but you did one action with 
15 different variables to that action, which all comes back to search. So promote, and then uh, get your sales staff involved. No different than compensating or spiffing for CSI, but this is real world. So any questions about that? That's your process there. You should really look in your store and make sure all four of those things you have in place as your strategy. So, you know, obviously um, we've all had, oh, here's a perfect one. Um, this is kind of like the Badger commercial. You know, this is still totally a man's dealership. I hate being called sweetie. Um, that's a fair statement, isn't it? Or honey, or you know, it, it, but this is the thing today because I, no matter where we're at in our life, we can pull this out and start talking about it. So, you know, what would you say here? What would you do? How would you respond to that? It's a good one, isn't it? I like that. Very clean. So, you know, what's interesting is when consumers have a bad experience, then almost everything becomes magnified. You know, who knows how much dust and dirt, but it didn't matter. You know, it just, it just, and, and you can tell really good, legitimate, negative reviews, they're very specific. They're not, they're not vague in a generality. So, you know, what would you do here? How would you handle this in your store? What would you say here? Good, good for you, good response. How about you, what would you say? Uh, I mean, what you can't say is, the damage is already done, so you have to try to get as much as possible power. Yeah, you need to address each and everything that is brought up. Say, what can you do to earn your business back, to earn your loss, to your trust, and so therefore, what can you do to And I don't know that they would respond after you send us. Typically, they do not. Almost 95% of consumers will not go back and respond again. They're done with you. You kind of checked you off the list as it would be. So, some good input here. So here's a couple pieces of advice. No matter what you say, it's going to be read by a lot of people. So you only have that old adage, one chance to make first good impression here. Uh, and I always use the Judge Judy analogy. This isn't Judge Judy. And you're not going to win a pissing contest here. You're just not. And if you get emotional and you cannot get emotional in response, you have to be very concise and clear, apologize, say that's not the way we do business. And if you have good volume, you can say, as you can see from other reviews, we, we really strive to do a really good job to take care of our customers. We sincerely apologize that this situation happened. Now, first, before you write that, you gotta take it offline and verify that it happened. Yeah. There's a salesperson involved, probably sales manager, service advisor, whomever, but you do wanna make sure that it's legit, right? Because um, things happen out there, they just do. And then try to get that person offline to, to call you. And that's the reason why we do recommend, and you see a difference in response when you say, you know, I'm the general manager, I'm the dealer principal, here's my email address and my mobile number, please contact me. Now what that does, a couple of different things to a consumer says, yeah, we recognize we screwed up. And yes, they're willing to put out a phone number out there, on the World Wide Web, so you know they, they, they screwed up and now they're trying to correct it. So a couple little pieces there, while they don't seem big, are very, very important. You know, that you care. That's the, that's the key. Not you screwed up, because everybody screws up because we're human, but you care. So, you know, we're sorry that you had a less than satisfactory experience. Please contact me to discuss details. Thank you, name and information. That to me is a little, you could do better. That's, this was an actual example that came through our site. So I think you could expand that. And to me, that I'm sorry doesn't, that I don't believe that I'm sorry piece. Do, do you agree? It looks like an auto response. Side. Correct, correct. So this is a perfect example of a bad situation that I don't think made it any <laughs> This is more condescending than what she said she was treated, in my opinion. But these are little things that I want you to think about. So when you're managing this process, that, that you give that consideration. So, um, and there's a couple more of these. Uh, you know, here's a, here's a perfect one. It says, you know, I just support the vehicle. Um, entire staff goes above and beyond. 
It's really good. It, it, wouldn't, that, wouldn't you like to have that one? Yeah. Yeah, and that would be the response. Fourth vehicle. You know, and I say this someday, if I was in sales today or in service as a service writer, and I took my best customers and said, listen, go online, write it, make sure you put my name in there. Make sure you put my name in there. Make sure you put my name in there. And what we're creating is a secondary brand within the store. And I can tell you there at uh, Greenway Dodge in Orlando, Florida, there's a salesman that sold nine cars last month alone. He doubled the amount of sales because he has so many people writing his name in the reviews that people walk in and ask for him. Mm -hmm. It's like, I read, I'm going to take care of people. I want to see Jack. And we've never seen that before. And then I think what's going to happen is it's going to help us not see people jump ship. You know, go from store to store to store. After three years, you've built this great reputation. Why don't you leave? You know, just food for thought. So it's, it gets a little deeper uh, than we may have thought of it before. Service advisors, exact same thing here. I mean, we're service advisors are salespeople. They are. I mean, you know, if that's how you make a living, you could double your income by doing this, would you do it? Yes. So. Let's see here. Uh, this is the one that came over. This is uh, the first salesman tried to get me to sign a blank loan form. I, you know, okay. I don't know what kind of store that is. I mean, that's the old elbow clothes, right? You see, right? So, um, but it, it, you'd be amazed at what we see come to our site. The stuff that's written that people say happened to them. So, you know, here's a good example. Um, if, if somebody potentially was reading this, it would be very tough for me to break away and find anything positive about this, about your store based on this one review. I mean, because there's a lot of screw-ups here, in, in essence. This was definitely taken offline. This is why volume is so critical again. No dealer response. What, is the, what, do you, what does that tell you as a consumer? So. And there's a multitude of all of these. So, and then we talk a little bit about the local piece. So to make sure I'm on color, <clears throat> at least I'm not standing between now and the bar. That's probably good. But we talk about our brand. You know, we think like Apple thinks differently. Avis, Timex. Timex may be a little, a little old for some of you in the room. That is a watch company, by the way. You guys will laugh at me. So brand's really important. So communicate your brand. Uh, you gotta let people know who you are. This is a different testimonials are so critical to have on your own website. And here's what these reviews again. And have video and customer testimonials. All of these different pieces are really important. So this is one of my favorite slides. So do you deliver on it? You say that your store is great, you've been in business forever, and you treat everybody like a billion dollars and you're awesome. But in actuality, all the reviews say you look like this. Anybody had a Big Mac lately? They're good. <laughs> but they do look like the one on the left or the right. On the right. So it's really important here to, to make sure if you tell people you do something. And here's what's really important. If you say that you've been doing all these things and that's what your marketing says and that's what all this says, but conversely your online reputation doesn't say that, that's not good. People see right through that. You don't want to go off the list. Uh, all of you claimed your Foursquare page in here. I'm just going to give you an example. But just if you haven't, that's okay. On the get listed, that's not going to claim all these for you, so you're going to have to go in and do it. But here's a perfect example from Foursquare. If you hit foursquare.com, the bottom right hand corner of that page it says click here, claim here, and, and then it says get started. So you start building your profile page. Most of these sites are that simple to claim a page, by the way. Anybody use a pinster now? Pinterest. Pinterest, excuse me. Yeah? Yes? You want to next week? Yeah. I told you, I said, do you know how old that company is? Two years. Two years old. So <laughs> Well, it's, 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 it's the next iteration of Martha Stewart. Mm -hmm. You know, Martha Stewart almost owned that online space for years because of all the video tutorials, how to bake a cake, how to make a dress. I mean, I'm just, and while it's progressed in its content, it's the same thing but less than two years old. Think about that. So who knows what two, two years from now is gonna bring for all these other sites too. So really important to make sure you're claiming that. 
And then when you think you got this down right, about a year later you have to start all over. <laughs> and so the, mo the mobile piece, so we'll finish with that because this is one of my favorites, but probably the biggest mistake we're missing, and maybe not all of you, is that this idea that texting, uh, email's dead. Um, I can tell you right now, it, uh, ADP and Cobalt just completed their study. Of course, they own every website for every GM dealer in America, so they, they get all the analytics. And it was so interesting, and in out of 10,000 people that shot their sites that actually bought, they were able to either watch a quick stream, do registrations, go back to them, less than 10% email the dealer today.